everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to make a Zoe tool. So way before motion pictures was a thing, uh, people used to make physical devices for animation and Zoetrope is one of them. It's essentially a series of photographs or images laid out one after another and spun fast enough so that it makes the person perceive that there, there is an animation happening, such as a, a bouncing ball or a horse galloping. So today we're going to be making exactly that, but with cardboard and other materials that you can find at home. We'll need some cardboard, pizza box, packaging material, any of that. We'll need a printout of this template, or you can just have a look at these measurements. It's attached in the description below. You'll also need some stationery such as scissors, blade, glue, a pen, scale, and a stapler. And the other two important materials you need are toothpicks and ribbon. So you can either use some really thin ribbon or string. This is what will be used to rotate the zoetrope at the end. To start with the process, let's cut, take the first page of the template, which is the one with all the circles, and cut it out. You can either cut, uh, draw them on the cardboard and cut it out, or you can stick the sheet onto the cardboard and cut the whole thing. Now that we have the first page of the template cut out and ready, let's start making the models. To start with, we're going to make two small pulleys. So we're going to be taking two of the smaller rectangles and gluing them together. Now we've made sure to mark the centers of all the circles as well when we were cutting them out. So let's just glue it together and let it dry. And let's also glue the other two small circles together. Once this is dried up, we can make the two pulleys. So take the two slightly larger circles and glue it to either side of one of the discs that you've just stuck together. You can use a needle to make the hole bigger and then just use a needle again to just ensure that they're all lined up when you're sticking them so that you can ensure that you get a perfectly smooth pulley. that aside that's one pulley done now let's make the other pulley so similarly we are going to be doing this with the two larger discs that are of nine centimeter diameter Now that the two pulleys are made, let's just let them dry for a little bit. In the meantime, what we can do is we can cut another piece of rectangle out. Now, there's no particular size for this rectangle. It should just be large enough so that we can place the two pulleys that we've made slightly apart from each other. What we're going to do is we're going to place it over there and mark a hole for the discs. And this is basically where the pulleys are going to go and spin. Now to avoid too much friction when they rub with this, we're going to put a small piece of cardboard on top of the hole and then place the pulley on top so that the friction between the cardboard surfaces are lesser. Now that we finish this, let's just expand those uh, holes in the stand a bit by using the toothpick since that's what we're going to be using to stand the pulley up. We can also just expand the holes of the pulley using a toothpick. Once this is ready, you can place the pulleys on the holes that we've cut out in the rectangular piece of cardboard using the toothpick. For now, we're just going to lightly place it because what we have to do next is measure the ribbon that we need to spin this. How you can do this is put it 
the ribbon or string that you're using is going to go through the gap between the pleats. So just put it through the gap like this and hold it taut and staple it. Now when we put it back in place, just make sure to put some force and make sure the pulley is in there. If you have a, a rubber hammer, you can push it in slightly. You can tap it slightly on this. Or you can use makeshift hammers like a glue stick. Now put this, put the ribbon or string back in place. Now when you move the smaller pulley, you will see the larger one spin as well. So we're going to be placing our zoetrope on this and we're going to be using this as, an, uh, as a handle to spin. So how we can use it as a handle is by cutting the toothpick off. And put another hole next to it. The next part of this project is to actually make the zoetrope. So the zoetrope, we're going to be making it on the last remaining disc that we have. So let's keep the mechanism aside for a bit and let's work on the, the zoetrope. So for this, we have to cut out the second page of the template. You'll notice that there's two types. There's the plain rectangles with eight slots on the hole and there's uh, the two rectangles which have slots inside them. So preferably cut out the, the template with the slots in them using a darker, a darker piece of paper and you can cut this using a lighter piece of paper. So we cut out the top two pieces using black paper and the bottom one using white. And what we're going to do is we're going to be sticking so on the design, you'll notice that there are dotted lines to the left. So that's the part that we're going to be sticking to the other half of the black sheet. So make sure not to use it right now. So stick the white paper that you have below the cutout slots. Once this is complete, you have something that looks like this. Now here, what we essentially have is eight slots to animate on. So let's call them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What we want to draw on this is a looping animation, meaning that whatever happens in one is what will happen again after eight, which means if a ball is bouncing up and down, the ball is in the bottom most position in one, it will go all the way up and maybe it'll reach its peak in five and then it'll fall down by eight so that it restarts at the bottom most position. Once this is complete, we're going to be taking the we're going to be taking one, two, three, four, and sticking it to this uh, piece that contains five, six, seven, and eight. Similarly, the, we can also just loop the whole thing around. Now let's bring the mechanism back in. 
what we're going to do is let me just pull out this toothpick carefully for a second and we're going to be sticking the the large disc onto the larger pulley Now that this is still working, what the last step we have to do is just place the zoetrope on top of this. Now just placing it works but if we start spinning it too fast it might fly off. So we just need to add a little tape here. Go ahead and stick the zoetrope. Attach tape on both sides like this and stick the zoetrope onto the cardboard. And you're done. Now when you view through one of the slots and spin this, you can see the ball moving up and down. So make sure to try this at home and share your animation with us. Try something completely new and different out. Maybe it's a, it's a bird that's flying across the sky or people dancing. We can't wait to see what you make and definitely do share it with us at Paper Crane Lab. Thank you.